Welcome to Rubber Band Catapult. The name is deceiving as this is not a catapult or a trebuchet that the students are building but actually a rubber band shooter. Starting this year in 2010, a new catapult must be built by the students by this year's current team members. As per the rules of ethics, the device must be built by the students. Of course, if power tools like saws or drills must be used, adult help might be necessary. But we want the students to be actively involved. The rubber band shooter, along with the team's rubber bands and data charts and tables, must all be turned in to the impound area before the beginning of the competition, just after the opening ceremonies on that Saturday. When students enter the competition area, the rules will be reviewed and they will be told what distance it is to the center of the target. Students will refer to their data charts that they've made over the last several months to see which rubber band at what setting is best for that given distance. The data charts made by the students prior to the competition may be as involved as this generated on a computer after they've collected the data from all their practicing or it may be as simple as a handwritten version. The point being that they need to collect data of how far rubber band shoots at given positions from their rubber band shooter. Rubber bands cannot be any more than 22 centimeters long when suspended freely under its own weight and it can't be more than one centimeter wide. These two are examples of rubber bands that would qualify. Now as the students practice for this event they may use these two different rubber bands at this particular setting. This catapult they have an A, B, C, or D and then they have a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We're going to shoot from setting D6. First I'm going to shoot the big rubber band. Now when the students load the rubber band onto their catapult or rubber band shooter it is important that one of the students secures that the rubber band does not shoot forward of the unit because if it does and it is a misfire I have to count it as a shot. Students are given three shots. Here is the first rubber band. And that rubber band went about seven meters. Now using that same setting we're going to use a shorter rubber band. Loading it up, securing it, and hopefully with two students you can have somebody hold it there. And this rubber band is going to be stretched much tighter, so it's going to go a longer distance. Rubber bands may not be knotted or linked together in any way. We've had in the past when rubber bands were knotted, weights put into the rubber band or nuts and bolts attached giving it weight. So we have to say no knots in the rubber band so everything is fair. The score for each shot will be determined by the smallest ring or any part of the rubber band that is touching the inside of that ring when it comes to rest. The smallest ring is worth 20 points on the target with each successive larger ring worth one less. In addition to the 20 points for the smallest ring, an X will be awarded for all shots where any part of the rubber band is touching within the center dot. The final score will be equal to the sum of the three shots. There are no practice shots and any misfires while loading will be counted as a shot. When making your catapult, make sure the end has a slot or a nail that will securely hold the rubber band so it doesn't slip off. You're going to want several settings and holes to shoot the rubber band from. Another thing we found when we've watched students in this event is the students will load up the catapult and then when they go to pull either the golf tee nail or whatever they're using out, they'll shift the, the catapult over and it will be 
off centered after they had set it up for aiming. We suggest putting a rubberized thing on the bottom, anything that works, so that it will stay secure on the floor. Also, you might want to make sure there could be lines on here, whatever works, so the students have an easy way to line it up towards the target. Remember, students cannot go beyond the starting line. They have to stay behind their catapult when they aim. You might even have one of the students hold the catapult as the other one shoots from the side to keep it secure. On the day of the event, students need to bring their catapult, the rubber bands they will be shooting, and their data charts so they can refer to them so they know what settings they're going to use for what distances. Some teams have even come with envelopes with the length marked on each envelope and the setting and the three rubber bands that work best for that distance. One of the first things a team probably needs to do is sit down and design a catapult, then start building the catapult. After several weeks, you have your catapult ready, you start shooting. You're going to shoot lots of rubber bands. You'll start with different size rubber bands, different settings, and try to get different distances. This year, anywhere from four to eight meters. But be sure to check the rules, because each year that may change. After you've shot zillions of rubber bands and collected data, then you want to keep tweaking your catapult if necessary until you have rubber bands for each distance. Distances could be exact meters, four, five, six, seven, or eight, or they could be half meters, four and a half, five and a half, six and a half, up to eight meters. So make sure you have rubber bands that shoot at each of those distances. And make sure you have your best three for each of those. Have a lot of fun and just enjoy shooting those rubber bands.